Okay, so spiral dynamic is based on the work undertaken by Claire Graves in the 1950s. Graves worked with Maurice Massey. Graves' work has been taken forward by Dr. Don Beck and Dr. Chris Cow. Uh, spiral dynamics builds on the research undertaken in the 50s and 60s by US psychologist Claire Graves of Union College, New York. Graves was searching to understand human nature in questions like, why are people different? Why do some people change, others don't change? How does the mind respond to a world that is becoming increasingly complex? The world never stays the same. Things are always changing. Things outside the events influence the world. Um, Graves began looking for patterns of human behavior development that are related to other theories and spent 20 years gathering primary data from thousands of sources. So you've got all these different sources that it's in base with. He originally was seeking to validate his contemporary and friend Abraham Maslow, hierarchy of needs, which we talked about yesterday, hierarchy of needs. Um, so he's looking to validate that. And we know that Maslow was humanistic. It was about, okay, people could change. In the right circumstances, in the right environment, give them food, give them water, give them shelter, security, um, they're gonna seek actualization. They're gonna look to improve. The motivation's there, but you've gotta provide the environment. So originally Graves was looking to validate the work, of Maslow. Um, Graves passed away in 86 before he could finish and publish his research. All that said and done, uh, it, the, the work was taken forward by his students. So his work became known as Graves in Theory and it was developed by two of his students, Christopher Cowan and Don Beck, who, who they coined the term spiral dynamic. Um, Beck and, and Cowan termed that. Um, now, Significantly, if you read some uh, the literature, uh, Beck was involved in using spiral dynamic uh, in South African transition from apartheid to multicultural demo democracy during the early 1990s. Um, so you read the Hansard pages, 342, 343, uh, it talks about how he used the model uh, in, in apartheid significantly. And, there's some pretty big reviews there. And you can imagine the issues of apartheid. I mean, what do you think could have happened under apartheid? All of a sudden, okay, um, the system changes. Um, then you've got a potential civil war in your hands, I would think, to a point. Uh, all sorts of things, you know. Um, but that's another story for another day. But Beck, Dr. Uh, Beck was one of the many people who worked with many stakeholders in South Africa to ensure the transition was as smooth as possible. So if you read the book, The Crucible, Forging South Africa's Future, it's quite an interesting read uh, by Beck and Linscott, uh, but it may have been republished since then. I remember reading the book years ago. It's a really, really fascinating book, and sort of you kind of look at the, the, uh, the influence that Beck had uh, as a stakeholder to ensure a smooth transition, uh, or as smooth as possible, one can get, really. Um, so Beck, what he did, because he, he's a big sports fan and, and really into sports too, uh, he, he used the uh, 1995 World Cup, Rugby World Cup, as a strategy to unite South Africa with rugby. So that was one of the elements he did, and he's influential in the book. Um, which is quite fascinating stuff, how sport can unite a nation to, to a point, um, but he'd use that quite strategically. So, you know, it helped that they won the World Cup, that didn't do any harm, but equally sort of crested them away, um, became a, well, utilization really to sort, of, um, to, to sort of guide and bring the nation together as much as one can bring the nation together. So the spiral model has eight levels of reality and it's got two tiers. Each level relates to cultural reality, a psychological reality, a cognitive reality for human beings. It's a very useful model in leadership, in conflict management, in organizational change, communication and marketing, working with diverse communities, and cultural transformation. So it's a useful model. You'll get some use out of the model, and I can sort of introduce you to some of the concepts and you can go away and do the math. And it's a really, really good model. Um, in the first tier of spiral, there are six levels of development, beginning with beige, which is what occurred at the beginning 100,000 years ago, okay? Um, this is the most survival 
orientated paradigm worldview. Um, so this is pretty much people living hand to mouth in poverty. Okay, beige um, correlates to people who are. And in the beginning, if you go back a hundred thousand years ago or so, it was about survival. Okay, survival was the order of the day. So they say, according to literature. Um, so how this correlates in the world we live in today is people who pretty much live hand to mouth. That's beige, the first level, but we'll go into that in more detail as we go along. In the second tier is an exceptionally large jump upward of the scale of human development stages. Only uh, the small population has made the jump to the second tier of the model, but we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. The second tier, the memes, the levels of existence in the second tier code as yellow and turquoise. It is suggested that less than 5% of the global population is currently existing in the second tier. 5% of the global population is currently existing primarily in the second tier. Uh, okay? And here we go, give you a bit of an idea, and we'll go into more detail, the first tier of consciousness. Um, so you've got the first tier of consciousness, and we'll sort of pick this up a little bit for you. So the first, you've got beige in the first tier, and that correlates to that correlates to survival, instinctive, food, water, procreation, warmth, protection. Do you read this in the book anywhere? It certainly is. It's uh, page. Oh, it's not in color. Ah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I'll, I'll, what I'll do after I'll just come along and color for you. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So beige, um, and you've got beige. It's food, water, preparation, warm protection. You've got purple. It's, and we'll go into more detail as we go along, but I'm just sort of going to skim through at this moment. You've got, okay, um, the way of thinking is the, the you know, animistic, so it's rituals, taboos, citations, tribes. Then you've got red, which correlates to gratification, conquest, action, impulsivity. Uh, so it's egocentric. Um, blue is authority, meaning, discipline, traditions, morality, rules. Uh, orange is strategic, materialistic, consumerism, success. Green is consensus, uh, egalitarian, feel, uh, feelings, authentic. Yellow, ecological, natural systems, realities, knowledge. And, and turquoise is holistic, collective individualism, cosmic spirituality, earth changes. So. One to six, then you've got the second tier, seven to eight. So it's about human intelligence. It's one that arises in response to life conditions. Okay, so life conditions influences what we do. Evolutionary history. Evolutionary history correlates to the conditions at that stage. Eight levels of reality, two tiers. Each level relates to a cultural reality. I mentioned earlier, psychological reality, a cognitive reality. Okay. According to Graves, there's up to 30 <laughs> or 40 levels, potentially, that we can go through the gears. At this point, the hierarchy is from one to eight. There are more levels after eight, we're just not there yet as a species. It starts from the bottom and goes up. So a very small proportion of people have got to here. Uh, so 5% or so, they say, but the potential is to sort of keep going. And I may have mentioned, I think, on the first day, sort of off the record and sort of going away from this very slightly off piece, that we share a lot of DNA, with, for example. So we share a lot of DNA with chimpanzees, for example, in 98%. So, and people might say, well, actually, you know what? It's quite fascinating, albeit the sequential structure is different, and we can sort of debate that's not a problem. But all things being well, 98%. But all, you think that 2% differential, how much more advanced we are from a technological point of view, amongst other things. Because we can say 10, 50, many, many words, thousands of words we can say, but they can barely say 50 words. We can build structures, we can build cars, we can 
do many, many things that they can't do, and that's sort of 2%. So imagine 2% beyond us. It's pretty fascinating. So you think, well, you know what? In a way, as human beings, we've kind of just come out of the swamp, really, from an evolutionary point of view. We're not an old species in that respect, in a couple of hundred thousand years ago. Um, it, so there's a long way to go. You could, you, could, you could make the case in point. But anyway, going back to the program, um, it has a color. Each level is a color. And it's a biopsychosocial, spiritual system, uh, ways of thinking. Each of these stages was an attempt for people to be right and create a value system. They needed to be right, they needed to be either accepted by others or by rejecting others to be accepted themselves. Um, old ways of coping do not disappear. We just progress to higher levels. Each level builds upon a previous level. And we can't directly, we, we, we can't directly go to one we'd like to be without going for a previous one. So it's very unlovable. You're not going to be able to go from, say, um, a beige straight up the turf course without experience and going through the gears, um, so to speak. Each stage was an attempt for people to be right to create a value system. They needed to be right and they needed to be accepted. And we mentioned that by others. So, okay, um, let's sort of go through in, in a bit more detail the significance of these levels. Okay, so first you've got beige. Beige is what occurred in the beginning, a hundred thousand years ago or so. And this is the most survival orientated paradigm, beige. Worldview, these are people who are living pretty much hand to mouth. Okay, people living hand to mouth in certain countries around the world, even in our country and, and Western society, you've got people, but it's very rare. It is very, very rare that you've got anyone in our society who's living in beige. But in certain societies, it's a lot more common. And okay, you could argue there are people who are living in poverty and so on and so forth, but statistically, it's a very, very small percentage comparatively to some societies. Um, but anyway, that's another story for another day. But when we look at beige, that's pretty much survival. Okay, every day it's a fight for survival. You're getting up in the morning, like you would have got up in the morning 100,000 years ago or so, you'd have been fighting to survive. Okay? That would have been the order of play. Hence the correlation with the evolution of the brain, the circadian rhythm, the cortisol levels high when the sun comes up because you've got to get cracking there. You're either going to be hunted or you hunt. And that's your order of play. So your cortisol goes up in the morning and then it sort of starts to decrease. And in the evening, it goes down to its lowest level because you can sleep then. You're safer in the evening unless you're surrounded by nocturnal creatures. You're safer, you can sleep, you can rest, okay? And this correlates birth to four years old and people who are homeless. Beige, if we want to correlate that with um, society, birth till about four years old. See, because when you're born, you're not going to make it. Now, we are, upon conception, a very weak species. Unlike many other animals, we have got next to no chance to survive without the people around us. Everyone agree with that? Okay, I think we can agree with that. What chance have you got? If you're born into a world, you've got no one to help you, to feed you. As a human being, you've got next to no chance. Okay, pretty much no chance at all. But people who uh, embrace their sexuality are really well. Mm. And they stay in the Well, that's debatable, um, I suppose. Um, it all depends how they develop and, and what the situation is. And that could be a, a research paper there, so... <laughs> um, but I take your point, the possibility, but in saying that, the other side of things, that's only one aspect of development. Um, it all depends what the situation is. And, but, but the point being is, okay, depending on what their functionality is, maladaptive, maladaptivity is, I guess, but from the point of view at birth, when you're most vulnerable, um, till about four years of age, roughly speaking, all things being well, you are surviving. Okay, and, and you know, you cry as a baby, the baby cries for nurturing, for love, and we talked about the rat licking experiments the other day, the ba nurtured babies, the babies that will lick, the rats, the ones that weren't, how it influenced their behavior going forward. 
Um, so the point being, you're watered, you're nurtured, you got warmth protection. Hopefully, you've chosen the right parents <laughs> and in a nice little environment. If you haven't chosen the right parents, you're probably going to be in a bit more trouble <laughs> in development. Um, but the point being, at this here, homeless people, survival. Okay, so a homeless person, in their mind, it's okay, well, where can I sleep tonight? Okay, is it cold? Is it warm? Where can I get food? That's primarily where they are at that point. Okay, so the purple meme is the second level on the spiral. The focus now is on the tribe instead of just the individual. And that begins about 50,000 years ago. Okay, so slightly before my time. On a micro level, this is where toddlers start to see themselves as part of a family or group. So at micro level, when I say micro level, I mean what we can relate to. Relating it to us, micro level, not that macro, but that begins 50,000 years ago. Then we go to tribe. The toddler starts to see themselves part of the family. Imagine the toddler when it realized, the baby, when the baby realizes it's a separate entity to the mum. So there's gonna be a point in the baby, because the baby thinks it's still one to a point, and then one day it wakes up thinking, goodness me, <laughs> I'm my own person now. A bit of a shock to the system in that respect. But the point being here is that the toddler starts to see themselves as part of the family or group. Okay, so that's when you go to purple. Um, and on a macro level, this is when the tribe starts to form. Stay in the tribe. Ritualistic thinking. Okay, so your best chance to survive is to be in a tribe. That's your best chance. If you go back 50,000 years ago, if you get ostracized from the tribe, what do you think is going to happen? You're in trouble. So you're going to, the only way you're going to survive, or the best chance you've got, okay, um, is to be part of a tribe. Now, if someone gets incarcerated in an offending institution, the best chance they've got in a hostile environment is to find a tribe, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, okay, to be safer, because you're going to struggle on your own. In society, you're going to struggle on your own. You form groups. Okay? A lot of your Facebook friends will be similar thinkers to you because you feel comfortable around that environment. A lot of the people you hang around with, you become part of a tribe because that's your best chance you've got. Hence rejection. Hence people being afraid of being ostracized. Because if you're out on your own, you're in trouble. Yeah. Just to say, because you were saying that you can't jump uh, up mm. from what you said, then you could actually go down a step. Well, that's you a great point. I'm going to sort of get to that. Yeah, I mean, you're thinking head there but that's that's a great point you've made then and it's an important point you've made because we're going to get there for sure and that's sort of ritualistic thinking um, okay the purple meme people go so what happens then all those years ago the groups become more organized the world constituted clans you've got these sort of clans and that's happens in some societies now it happens in our society with gangs you get these sort of clans it's more well organized okay um, the beginning, of, the beginning of a kind of cultural development where people are also being able to make kinds of connections which we could at that point call superstitions. Um, but in fact, they'll be able to make connections between their own minds and events. Okay, So a full moon means this. Uh, that means that. I just saw a horse run across the field. That means we're going to get a good harvest. Does that sort of make sense? That sort of way of thinking. You equate one thing with the other. You could call that superstition if you wanted to. Okay. So you sort of make connections. This means this. If I do that, that means that. And that's sort of at that level there. That's where people start to put one with the other. Okay. Um, I've just seen the a star fly across the night sky and you know, it means it's going to happen. And um, if I do this, this will happen. Biopsychosocial development. You associate the full moon with the coming of a harvest. So sacrifice for safety. Sacrifice for safety. We see that in certain tribes. What do certain tribes do? They have sacrifice ritual. Okay. Um, it can be brutal in certain situations, um, okay? But then, 10,000 years ago, roughly speaking, the purple would break into a red level, an individualistic level 
I want to be my own person. No part of rites of passage, warlord level. Okay? The strongest survive. When one or two people stand out, the rest of the level two tribe are considered <laughs> lead leaders. Okay? So anyone ever watch Planet of the Apes before? Okay. So okay, don't rush out and watch it by the way. I shouldn't have a good film to be fair. But you know, you've got like a leader, don't you? And that's the leader, that's the warlord, so to speak. He's the one that stands out. And you know sort of in the, in, in, in the kingdom of the uh, apes where it's the alpha who leads the group, the strongest in the group. And, and you can see he gets challenged. There's another dude who's trying to overcome him to be the leader. And if you see the film, you've got like another ape who's trying to overthrow him, to overtake and be the main dude in the group type thing. And, and I don't know if you recall the film, but there's a battle, okay? Um, who can be? And that's pretty much how it works in that environment. They actually showed that on the documentary. In the studio, brilliant. In the studio, 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 studio okay. with the apes and the ape called okay. the apes on there. Yep, sorry. Um, and how as soon as he started to show signs of weakness, the others moved in to become the alpha. Wow, so that was David Attenborough, the documentary. Yeah. I didn't see, I'm not seeing that. Really yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes, okay, that's fascinating. So, so once the ape showed any weakness, the other one sort of came along, here's my chance. It was amazing because they left yeah. him for dead, wow. and he actually came back and established <laughs> his, his, his place in, in the community. So it's wow. a fantastic story. That'd be interesting. So I'll have to, I'll have to um, see if I can track that down. So, so there's like a, a war of attrition going on there. Who can be the leader? Yeah. 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 Wow. Gee. Actually, it shows how animals are using tools to yeah. think in our day. How yes. Are, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 there's, you know, our brain. I mean, one of these we've got that, that they don't have that they seem to develop in that uh, film is the frontal cortex. We've got a layer of the brain that sort of we can do and think, and, and you know, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse that layer because we sometimes think too much. <laughs> but anyway, um, on a macro, le a micro level, it's like the teenager, the rebellion. Okay, I don't need your help. The teenager into the rebellious year. Okay. Anyone ever come across a teenager? I don't need you. I can do it on my own. Yeah, I don't need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you go back to being a teenager and on that level, there, I don't need you. I can do it on my own. I don't need your help and, and blah 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 type thing. Okay. Um, and that goes for that rebellious phase. They generally grow out of it. Some don't. <laughs> Some don't. But they learn to stand up for themselves. It's about standing up for yourself, okay? So standing up for yourself. So all of a sudden, you tell the teenager, go do your room. Uh, and they turn around and say, well, you can go do one type thing. And, 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 and you know, it happens, isn't it? There's that sort of transition at that point there. Um, so they're really, really forceful. So, you know, don't like someone, love someone. Stand, don't stand up for yourself, fight for yourself. Don't be strong, be indestructible, okay? But there's an issue with that. And anyone know what the issue is? There's always someone bigger and uglier than you that's going to take you down, <laughs> man. And that's just the way it is. And the realization no one's a pushover. A teenager strutting around in the house goes outside and decides they're going to treat people like, you know, I'll get one over you. There's someone going to be bigger and uglier who's going to put them in their place. That's a rude awakening. Okay? Some quicker than others, by the way. Some. Yes, but they'll realize that because eventually you can't win all the time. The ape gets old, doesn't it? And weaker. And then there's a new one coming through and you know, you get injuries and a few illnesses and ailments and then, you know, it's a cycle of life, I'm afraid. It's just the way it is. But equally insane, that could be a brutal realization that we have. So, with that realization, red created, it would bring out four system, designated blue. Okay. And this corresponds to 5,000 years ago. And the, the correlation here is a time of organized religion. It's the beginning of Christianity and Judaism. And during this period of time, we start to create law and rule and order. So you've got order. Because you can't have everyone running around, slaying each other and that sort of stuff. Because in the end, really, it's not going to do good for anybody. So in the end, you've got some order. Some law and order, some rule. Okay. On a micro level, 
This is when we learn to identify with institution a paradigm bigger than us. Okay, we start to realize we're part of a bigger system. Okay. Less me, more we. Less me, more we. Civilizations create armies and better ways to enforce the law. So you've got societies become civilized in the sense that with armies, law enforcement, you step out of line, okay, you're a red swanning around with your sword, you step out of line, you get pulled in. Okay. From the point of view of a micro level, it sort of relates to the person who's in a job, I'll work for 40 years to get me gold watch. So there's a correlation with that security. The correlation with, say, for example, people who work in an environment, well, maybe not the public sector now, but probably more the public sector of years gone by, but, but you know you've got that job for life, that stability, that sort of job for life type thing. I'll fit into society. I'll keep my head down. I'll go to work. I won't cause too much of a fuss. And I've got my retirement to look forward to. And I'll get my goal watch at the end type thing. Does that sort of make sense? That's okay, sort of correlation. Okay, good point. So the fourth system was designed, designated blue, an antidote to the mayhem of red. So you got that mayhem of red, then we designed that, which is blue. So blue, what happens then, there's a correlation here between the plagues that swept Europe. And at that point, nearly wiped out millions of people. Anyone who heard of the plague, you know, the plagues that sort of swept? And millions of people died. And what that caused is a crisis of faith. People did not feel protected. I've done everything you've told me to do. But it didn't prevent that. So there's a crisis of faith now. Why did that happen amongst people? And that starts to create a period of orange. Uh, fifth system. A system, a worldview that's characterized by a scientific method. Okay? Uh, enlightenment period, which is the orange, the fifth system. The birth of capitalism begins. Science and technology become very important. Me-centric, the focus on the individual. Okay, think about capitalism, think about the individual, think about, okay, if I work hard, if I go out there, if I've got an idea, I can do this, that and the other. So, okay, how does that sort of relate to the micro level? So we can think of the orange, the, um, the, the person, the materialism. You can have that car. If you only work hard enough. Consumerism. Buy that. Success. Image. Status. Social status. Growth. You know, that car you drive, the, the, the clothes you wear, that suit you wear, it has a significance to your status. You introduce yourself to people with what you do professionally. You might be a CEO, a director of a company. Um, so the, the orange levels, you know, it's, it's strive and drive, strive. You can have it all. Okay, does that resonate? Fine, you can you can be. So what time we're looking? So we had five thousand for the blue. Roughly about the time of the, they say roughly about the time, orange level. Like Margaret Thatcher or something. No, no, long before her. Long before her. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, don't know. Something like that, like the pre-industrial revolution. Well, yeah, around right about the where capitalism becomes. Say, however, how, how many hundred years ago is that now? Then? 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine, that's okay, that's okay. Yeah. We're going to get to that anyway, and yeah. sort of going to a really good question, but I would say there's over capitalism, you're looking at, say, what, 140, 150, that's revolution, 200 years, is that, am I? 200 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a bit before yeah. my time. Some of you might remember it, but a <laughs> 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 bit of a worry. Yeah, maybe a past life. <laughs> maybe a past life. But you sort of see how all of a sudden, people is, you know, we talk about for the crisis of, uh, of faith, and you think, well, that, that sort of leads to that, and... That's not the only thing, but that's sort of giving you an idea. That's what's suggested anyway. You got, it's okay, you can have it, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it becomes me centric. You know, go out and get it. Go, you can do it, man. Just go to that motivational seminar. Go to one of those motivational seminars. You see plenty of these people have. <laughs> plenty of people at that level. So I remember reading yeah. somewhere about the Victorians sort of highlighting yes. identity rather mm. than individualism. Possibility. Yeah. You know, it's more about I am yes, an identity that's yeah. different. It's possibly, yeah. You know, right? yeah. So, uh, so that would have come, you know, just before this, really, wasn't it? Or yeah, maybe, time, maybe, yeah. yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah. That's sort of just uh, estimation. Yeah. 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 Could you just go back? I, what I missed going through all this is the boundaries. There was certain events which took place uh, well, to yeah. one to another. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the events themselves. Yeah, I, I, what, what I, yeah, okay. So if I sort of. If I, if, I, if I roll it on, then I'll come back to it for you. Yeah, I will do it. Exactly. Yeah. And these events, by the way, um, <laughs> they're suggested correlations that you know, uh, people have made. No one knows 100% for sure. No one, none of us were around uh, then. So you could sort of debate that if you really wanted to. But uh, that's a great point. I, I will sort of go back through again so you can sort of see some of the events that were suggested to be influential. But anyway, we, we then go to, um, to Green. Uh, okay, we go to Green. And green is all of a sudden when you, you kind of you kind of say to yourself, well, I've, I've sort of gone through the gears. Uh, I've decided that actually, you know what? You know, being at four, so I get to four, orange. I take a job with the the, the, the public sector, and I've got this guarantee for life. And I decide, you know what? I want a little more than that. I go to one of the motivational seminars. Something sparks off in my brain. I think I, I can have it all. And I set up my own business. I become successful. I buy myself a gold watch and. I buy myself a nice sports car and, and so on and so forth. Then all of a sudden there's sort of a bit of a crisis. Not a midlife crisis, by the way. But I start thinking, well, is that all it is? Okay, and all of a sudden I start to think, you know what? From a micro level, it's ecological. It goes back to we again. Um, the community, how we can give back to the world. The orange goes to green. Harmony. Joining together for mutual growth, awareness, belonging. So the green is egalitarianism. The green is feelings, authentic, sharing, caring, community. That sort of uh, green piece type thing. Okay, save the world. Save this, save that. Okay, we get to that sort of level, we start to sort of have that conscience and think, well, really, it's not really all about strive and drive. You get green pieces. But there is an issue with that too. And the issue with that is evident. Because you sort of get to there and think, well, actually, you know what? How much of a difference can I really make? And you think, well, I go out there and I, I can protest. I can tie myself up to a tree. I can do all these sort of things. But, but not only that, then there's sort of that sort of infighting within as well. You start to realize, well, actually, you know what? For the world to function, we do need to have people doing certain things. You know, all things being well, so, okay, it's all great, good and well um, to do all this, that and the other, but you, you kind of start to realise this, sort of, this crisis of consciousness, um, so to speak, in my way of putting it, would be you start to realise that actually, you know what, we need to function. We all need roles. Um, but the yellow level is the, what Beck calls is the, the, the flex flow uh, level. And the yellow level... Uh, correlates to natural systems, self principles, multiple realities, knowledge. So you kind of start to see things from the bigger picture. You kind of make your way towards the top of the hierarchy, if you want to call it that, and you start seeing things from, 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 from outside. You start to see all that going on. You become one of those sort of people that sees things from a multiple perspective multiple realities, you sort of gaze knowledge, you sort of um, flow uh, the, the turquoise level is collective individualism cosmic spirit 
Goodality, Earth changed, and, and very few people, as I mentioned earlier, they suggest that about 5% of people actually get there. And you can think of some people in society, and you look at them, and it's hard, and I mentioned earlier, if you sort of going through each level, what the hypothesis is, is that it's very difficult for someone to understand the level beyond, if they're in the level that they're in. Um, but you can sort of see people who are at that holistic level. Um, certain thinkers in the world see the world outside the box. In my opinion, as an observation, I always say the people that, and I could be wrong because I don't know these people, I'm only sort of uh, making a educated guess, I, I would say the likes of say, I don't know, maybe someone like a Carl Sagan or people who sort of get to that point where they sort of see, um, you know, a much bigger, broader picture. Um, maybe an Elon Musk, I could be wrong, you know, I'm not sort of suggesting he is or he isn't, but I suppose he's sort of thinking space travel and, and building, you know, something on a different planet and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, can, you, can anyone sort of think of people like that? You sort of reflect on some people who sort of got to that point where they kind of sort of... Possibility, yeah, he's sort of... Richard Branson. Yeah. yeah, possibly, and he certainly would have been at that level at one point. He certainly was uh, at, at the uh, at the orange level. He was very, you know, building, and maybe now he's at that point. He's looking to. I think it's a good point. There's a good chance that they are. They kind of think, um, you know, broadly speaking, um, but sort of going forward before we sort of touch on what you mentioned before. Maybe going back to some of these events. Each of these stages, each of these stages was an attempt for people to be right and create a value system. They, they need to be right. They need to be accepted by others by, or by rejecting others to accepting ourselves. So, you know, think far back in your family tree, before primate, every organism that lived or created died, the point where you are now, every organism dates back in the family tree, assessing what's going on adapting to the environment, avoiding pain, seeking pleasure, survival. So every generation, every situation presents us with different challenges. We adapt to the situation we're faced with. And the talked about the brain on the first day and how the brain evolves with a simple organism. Like the organism you see in a pod, you clap and, and it goes this way and that way to avoid pain and seek pleasure. Survival, survival of the species is our main motivation to, to stay alive, to keep ourselves and, and keep our species going. Our biological drive centers around that. Procreation, reproduction, it's around avoiding pain, seeking pleasure, it's around keeping our species going. Um, old ways of coping as you go through levels, to answer Fred's question, don't disappear. Okay? We just progress to higher levels. Each level builds on a previous level. And we can't directly go to the one we'd like to be like without, without first going through the previous one. So if I'd like to go, so you can imagine on a micro level, if a baby's born and wants to go straight to um, on beige and then wants to go straight to a to turquoise, it's not possible because it hasn't experienced and adapted to life in general. So it's going to go through it in its own way. So experiences have a big influence on our reality. So depending on what the baby experiences, so you can think, okay, depending on what environment it's born, has a big correlation to the way it's going to move forward on a micro level. Okay, so it's unlikely you're going to go through. Uh, well, the hypothesis is you're not going to go from one level to, to three or four levels above and beyond. Um, conceptually, a limitless level. Um, as a species, we've really gotten to about seven. So the experts say, uh, and I mentioned earlier about the turquoise, we realise that survival in life is fragile. Consciousness, space travel. I don't want to break the news. Um, I'll break it gently if you're not aware of it, but the sun's going to blow up one day. It's the start. Um, it's just the way it is. 
maybe not today or tomorrow, it's a beautiful day outside now, it's shining pretty nice now, but it will at one point. To many of years. Precisely. Exactly. And, and, and that's another you know, point being is that people are thinking, okay, we want to keep our species going, <laughs> start looking elsewhere, somewhere. Um, that's the estimation. What's a few billion years between friends? It, they say <laughs> it's 13.7 billion years we've been around. You know, we've been around, for, the, the Earth's been around anyway for a pretty long time, so they say. Um, the average level of human species is four. So as a general rule, most people, as a ballpark figure, are going to get to around about that four. All things being well, in different cultures, society, and that, that's, that's the average, they say. Four. To put it into context, cross-culturally, I've done a bit of homework and, and, and sort of... I think this is one way of looking at things. And this is my sort of, which is probably debatable, I'm sure I'll get someone debating me somewhere in the world, but this is my sort of feeling is, is that, to put in the context, I think that from a cultural perspective, I would say that in the United States, you're probably looking at about, say, level four and five make up roughly 70, 80% of the population. Because you would say United States, level five is probably more prevalent to the United Kingdom. How do I make that hypothesis? Well, we still are a little bit more socialist than we like to think, comparatively. Where's my evidence? We've still got a healthcare system, which acts as a safety net for people, a welfare system. In America, you don't really have that. So I would say in America, it's probably more towards five. We're in Europe and, and the UK, we're probably more towards four, on the basis that we created a healthcare system after the Second World War, uh, an NHS uh, to provide healthcare for one and all, and we've got a welfare system. What happened in America when they proposed a healthcare system? Well, they went up in arms, didn't they? They weren't happy about that, and and and, and equally in saying that you don't have the same welfare system over there. So that's sort of, but equally, give or take, we're, we're not too far off the mark. And I think someone did mention. Who mentioned Thatch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 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 see. There, you can see the transition. She goes to America, and she sees. If you ever get to see that interview, you'll see she goes to the States. She comes back from America and says, well, we can be more like that, entrepreneurial. It's more driven, you know? So the UK is making this sort of transition from after the war, healthcare, welfare, to actually, you know what, I've been to America, you get a chance to watch the video, and they're driven. They're, you know, and I think she probably sees that they're on that sort of fifth tier. You can have it, you can do it. Own your own home, buy your own home. Set your own business up, okay? I, look, I'm not getting political here, by the way. I don't have any stake in any of that. I'm just saying as an observation, you know. Is this something we're about to step back then? Well, I don't know, I hope not. I'm thinking like, you know, dismantling things like NHS, and the sway of political intent and all Depends this. how you think, uh, <laughs> Depends what you're thinking is, I suppose. I, I don't know, it's just it, the, the, the basis here is that basically from a contextual situation would be, uh, I would say, um, you know, there's plenty of people at level four in the States too, by the way, and I would say that that's the majority is at four and five anyway, is at 70, 80%. Because most people in the States work either for, you know, a, a government job or they sort of fit into this sort of law, lawful society. You've got people who, like, you know, are in the military, they work in a, you know, a police, There's plenty of people at four there. But I would say, based on my infinite wisdom, and then I go off, if you look at the, the FTSE 100, the, the top 100 companies, a lot of them seem to be American. And on that basis, I think that they've probably got more people at five than what we have. I'm not saying we're not creative here, we certainly are, but a lot of the creative people we've got here tend to go over there when they reach a certain level, for various reasons, but the point being, there is that drive, I think. A point, but yeah, I could be wrong. But I'm basing that off, you know, in our society, we do have a, a stronger healthcare welfare. Whether that's a good or bad thing, I don't know. I really don't know. That's, that's debatable. But the point being here is that level six comes out at around about 10%. Um, and it's growing fast. And you'll know now there's more and more people, isn't there, that are okay, are turning to six. Yeah. It's everywhere, isn't it? All it's yeah. all about feelings. It's all about harmony. Yeah. Precisely, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, so the, we've sort of going to use America as a ballpark figure. 
um, four and five, and give or take, we're not too far what they are. If, four, if level four and five make up 70, 80% of the population in our society and their society, then six comes out about 10%. And it's growing fast, and the rest and everybody else is about three. And a huge makeup of that is teenagers. And if they're older and they're still at three, they're likely to be in a gang. Okay? They're likely to be in the gang. Uh, roaming the streets causing problems. Because free causes problems, isn't it? In a society that we live in. Okay, you wouldn't want to be around people who are free. Uh, Yes. And um, as an adult and don't feel threatened, yeah. got through that and I'm trying to think of Ferguson. So Alex Ferguson, fantastic football player in Manchester. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then retired. So when he retired, would he go to six or would he go back down to a four? Uh, no, I mean, you know, you, you, I suppose like any, any models, you can, you can fluctuate in and out, you go up and down the gears and, and like I mentioned yesterday, Maslow's model where, okay, if you actualization but lose your job, the first thing you can do is go back to survival. So it depends on the situation he's in. I mean, he may do, he may sort of go back, but he may go up to, who knows? But he has a brain hemorrhage to do then. Precisely. So that could change. Mm -hmm. That's another life event that could change the way mm -hmm. it perceives the world. So, you know, you can sort of fluctuate, but once you've been at a certain point in your life, it's more than life you're going to sort of push on, or stay where you are, or push on, but you may equally in certain situations, if I'm sort of walking down the street and I'm face of a gang, then you might drop down that level too. So the environment has a big effect on the situation you're in. We have the capacity. Um, that's the beauty of working your way through the gears. You can drop down and sort of meet the person where they are in adverse to not being able to go up. But another point of view is that, so freeze are usually in gangs in our society, in our society, but there's more people in level three in other societies where gangs are more prominent, okay? Other societies that don't have and haven't got the infrastructure we've got are there. Um, level two, mostly children. So we, after we take 75% away, 70, 80% away for four and five, the rest, the other 20%, you can say 10% comes in at six, you know, the green PC, the, the gayer people, what are, you know, there's that, gay, that channel, that sort of, anyone you know, seen that channel, that, that channel before? The evolutionary channel and, you know, these sort of people. That, I would put them in that bracket, in my opinion. Um, they might think they're higher, but I think it's, in my opinion, uh, not so. They're probably at that point there. So they sort of form these groups, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so you get 20% 20, 20 left, 10% six. Everyone else is going to be roughly at three, and that's mainly the population of teenagers that we've got in the world, in our, in our sort of Western world, gangs. And then you're going to have people at two, which are mostly children, but some adults are at two as well. And that goes back to what Karen was saying before. It could be for a variety of reasons why they are where they are. Okay, it could be that they've got, you know, um, something, some sort of condition that sort of led to them struggling to evolve, or, or could be uh, a situation that they might have lost everything that they had, they end up on the street, who knows, you know? Um, the number of level ones are just generally uh, represented by infants, as a general rule. So you take away that sort of percentage again. Infants generally take up the majority of the one, but people are serially homeless. So I'm not saying people sort of like, you know, bounce or living on a friend's couch. I'm saying people are like generally outside in our Western world. But you've got a lot more people at one in, in, in other worlds, obviously. Other countries are, are, are huge more people. So I want to reiterate before we sort of um, break um, for lunch. And I will, after lunch, because somebody asked for the sort of correlation between life, world events, and he, he, he sort of shows the sort of correlation. It's in the manual too. But I'll sort of show you the correlations in case you sort of weren't sure about that. But what I want to sort of reiterate is in spiral dynamic, the numbers have been replaced with colours uh, for the reason that there's no worse or no better. So the reason why they use colours and not numbers, but we're highlighting this, 
with numbers for simplicity is because it's not better or worse. It's to remove the prejudice. It's not to say that you're one, you're worse than me, you're two, you're better than me. It's not higher or lower, better or worse. It's just life. It's just circumstances. The biopsychosocial correlation, the biopsychosocial correlation that, and experiences that you have that take you where you are. So it's not saying that someone is like a, a five, they're better than a two, or they're better. There's no better or worse. And that's why they use colors. Okay? Now, many things influence our level. It's not a conscious choice completely. Okay? It could be opportunity. You might get an opportunity to, to, to go from four or five. Your friend says, come join me in this business. You get the chance to do it. You might get a job interview, you get the job. You might not get a job. Where you're born is a huge determining factor. If you're born in a country that's sort of war-torn and experiencing famine, it's not a choice of yours. You've not chosen that. But you were dealt those cards. And there's a very good chance to be born in an environment that's sort of fighting this war every day, you're going to be in survival mode. Well, why wouldn't you be? The last thing you're thinking about is setting up a business if you sort of, you know, there's gunfire every day and that sort of stuff. You're looking to keep yourself safe and alive. You're blind tried. So many things influence people's levels. It's not a conscience decision. Would you say that, Jim, as well? You know, on the orange level, success, or what's, what would be someone's definition of success? Well, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, everyone's got their own yeah. definition of success, I suppose, but, mm. you know... And there's a lot of people, if they get to that, so as a five, they'd say, well, what now? But, and that's precisely what we're um, saying, yeah. They, they can do. Now, they might not do, because they might sort of be too busy flying so around in jets and having fun and doing whatever they decide they want to do, but then they might do as well. But that's how we work our way through the gears. Mm. But the majority of people sort of stay there or four anyway. So, you know, in certain countries, two or three... Uh, in less developed countries, the majority is going to be two or three. Okay, if you go to a country that's sort of um, constantly at war and famine and, and through various reasons, then it is survival, isn't it? It's the warlord, you know, running around. The strongest survives. They grow to that. You've got the tribal gangs, the tribe, the big, big tribes. And think of certain societies around the world where things are very tribal within the country itself. You know, we can think of plenty of places like that where it's very um, tribal. You've got, you've got many, many different tribes uh, that are circulating and, and striving for dominance in that respect. And, and they are living day by day. They really are living day by day. They're getting up in the morning and, and, uh, and they are, it's a fight for survival. Jim, sorry to just yeah. interrupt there, but we've got cousins in South Africa at the moment and yeah. it's really bad there. They, they haven't come home because they, they're fighting to survive. Um, yeah, yeah. They have to, it's quite lawless there now, they, yeah. you won't hear it on the news, but they said that um, they've got to pay the police to be able to sleep at night and yeah, they have I mean, the water you know, turned yeah, off yeah, and things that's, like that's, that. Yeah. That's one example, I guess. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know the full situation there, but you know. Well, where she lives, she said. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah. but the possibility yeah. sort of shows. So they're that fighting that, to survive there, really. mm. well, they're, well, they're having to get away, but even like the yeah. basic needs are being cut, like yeah. water. Um, yeah, so, like so, that, so so where she lives, the demographic of where she lives sounds to me, from what you say, yeah. not that I've sort of, um, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I suppose in every country we've got places that are at different levels predominantly that influence by the environment, but it sounds what you're saying there for sure, it looks, looks more like, the, you know, yeah, two or yeah. three, one would think, mm -hmm. if you fight and survive, uh, one would think that's a, the case. In a more developed country, uh, four or five <coughs> is going to be... <laughs> The uh, order of play. <laughs> so, you know, the, the Western world that we live in, uh, you know, Europe, America, uh, Australia, places like that are, are relatively developed in one sense. Um, you know, you, you've got the, the essentials, you've got an opportunity to get a job, you've got, you, you've got the basics, really. You know, even even, even the, the poorest people financially <laughs> in our society have got some basics, haven't they? They've got welfare, they've got an opportunity to get a job, they've got educational opportunities. In, in that respect, okay? And that influences that. So it's not individual development, it's cultural development. So the culture plays a big role. See, you know, you didn't really, you didn't choose where you were born, you were just born where you were born, and you adapt to the environment you're in, and that provided you the opportunity to do, you know, whatever. Um, 
from an individual perspective, that's not to say four or five is more superior than two or three, but four or five, there's more opportunities. Okay? Less people at four or five, less people at four or five individually move to a country that's at two or three than people at two or three to four or five. That's a fact, it's a statistical fact. Okay? Why do people want to come to countries that we're at four or five? Why would they want to come along? Well, there's more opportunities. Would you prefer to get up in the morning and fight and, and survive? And, or would you prefer to get up in the morning and, you know, okay, we've got our challenges, but they're ne not nearly as much as it would be in the society of two or three. We've got crime, we've got stuff that goes on, but as a general rule, statistically, um, we've got a better chance to, to, for education, for, for business, to for actualization in that sense, you could argue. So, hence the demographic, people who are in, in, in countries that are war-torn, they look to get away. They don't want to be there in the sense that it's, it's tough going. It really is. There's less opportunity. Not all of them. Some stay, some adapt, but from the point is, it's not one being more superior than the other. You know, you're not a more superior person because you grew up in an environment where things are four or five and someone who grew up in two or three. It's just the way it is. It's the luck of the draw. So, okay, <coughs> to reiterate before we break. Um, so, level one, the child is born. Level, and, and we talk about the colour, so I'm gonna, I refer to level one as in simplicity. So, at the beginning, the child is born. Two, it's the tribe. Three, beyond the tribe. Four, more to life. Anarchy, value, rules, and systems. Five, understand rules. What more? Entrepreneurship, science. Six, giving back, Greenpeace. Seven, give and give back. Because you realise at seven you can't keep giving and not get anything back. It's just not sustainable in one sense, but then eight is sort of seen at one. Okay? Um, so I want you to think about for a moment. Yeah, if you want to, if you just take a moment to think where you might be on the spiral, just take a minute or two before lunch to think, okay, where am I on that spiral? Where am I? Where do I sit on that spiral? Take a moment to think that and access that. We can't relate to a level we can't understand. Okay, it's very difficult for someone to relate to a level they haven't been. Can you struggle? Sorry. Can you struggle in belief? I'm not sure what you mean. Can you be like? Can you be like? I don't want to answer the question wrong because I'm not quite sure. Uh, you can you can get to you can sort of you, you can flux yeah you can sort of yeah. bounce. But the issue is is that if you're if you've sort of reached a certain level, you're going to struggle to understand a level beyond where you are because you've not been there. It's like well, I don't know. So they say. Well, I would think so. If you, let, let, let's use an analogy which is probably way off the mark if you haven't been to a place in, if there's a place in the world you haven't been um, you're going to struggle to understand. I was thinking yeah. this model I can get yeah. it and like it I think it's a really helpful construct because I'm wondering about the outliers so people like <coughs> Aboriginals and people yeah. who are still living who have clearly bypassed some of those but are clearly at other levels so they would value Earth, they would clearly fit in six. Yeah, they might. Yeah, I mean, we, we sort of. never have gone through, you know, us going over there. We see what Western impact had on them. That would really grab mm -hmm. them through, you know, commercial and materialism. Yeah. Still struggling as a culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that's hence the model. Yeah, it can be quite useful in that respect. So, you know, 
Absolutely. So many of the problems that exist in the world is people are operating at different levels. I mentioned earlier about psychology uh, for the greater good for, for many, many years being influenced by Western, um, you know, middle-aged gentlemen who spread this sort of ideology across the universe, across different countries, but cross-culturally didn't always work. Mm -hmm. But you could argue yeah. that's also too, isn't it, uh, yeah. purple, in the sense that they're believing yeah. this is, you could argue. Well, that's what I'm saying, they're yeah. almost yeah. missing out on yeah. the levels yeah. there, but I would clearly yeah. see them from yeah. a bit of research that we could be at some of the higher levels in a way, as well as meeting that they seem to have missed maybe a few out of the middle. Well, I, don't I don't know because they're sort of, they'd be living and they'd be surviving, so they're still in an environment where they get. So they're not in an environment where they're fighting for survival. So they're not exactly fighting off. Um, you know, they must at some point have some sort of uh, safety, or you know, it's very hard to actualize if you're getting up in the morning and, and fighting. So it's very unlikely in the beginning of the morning and you know, fighting off tribes and. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, compared cultures, mm. they didn't really do that. Yeah, no, well, possibly, so maybe, maybe they would, I, I don't know, yeah. Mm. You think they might be more spiritual? That's what I'm saying, they, they seem to be spiritual, so yeah. they're higher yeah. than the elements yes. of mystery. But we'll, we'll, we'll just hold that thought, because I just want to sort of, because I'm sort of mindful, I'm just going to go through this, and some, you know, but that's a good point, we can get to that. I've got some thoughts on that, to be fair, I'm sort of mindful of lunch, but there's a clash of memes sometimes as well, so let's, for example, if you take, if you take certain societies, okay, each meme has like a, its own frequency, like an antenna, to draw people in that tend to sort of relate to, to tend to sort of find each other in one sense. But in some society, say in beige, sometimes in some environments, the father eats first. Why does the father eat first? Because if the father eats first, the family die. So cross-culturally, it's hard for us to understand uh, why that would happen, but that does happen in certain environments. Um, so you do get these clash of memes as well along the way. Um, but we will do, um, I'm sort of mindful of, of, of lunch because we can keep the discussion going. It's really, really interesting and fascinating. What I will do afterwards is sort of um, show you some of the, we'll sort of, we'll sort of reflect on some of the correlating events that are associated with the development of another level. Uh, and also we'll go into a little bit more detail in terms of um, the, 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 the point that started to make. So if we go to lunch, is that till half one okay? It's a little bit less than an hour, but yeah. it's um, Saturday, so. Yeah.